welcome to The Horror Hangout, a podcast where film fans watch the best and worst of horror movies and we talk all about them. Today's a little different from our regular programming, uh, a bonus episode chatting with the director of one of the films premiering at uh, the Fright Press Glasgow Festival later this month. My name is Andy Conduit Turner and I'm joined today by Sebastian Godwin, the writer and director of Homebound, a chilling thriller feature receiving its UK premiere at Glasgow Fright Fest. Uh, Friday the 11th of March, so not too long away. Uh, welcome, Sebastian. Mm, thanks so much. So great to be here. Thank uh, you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, thank you for, for joining us today. Congratulations. First, uh, I know you've been a filmmaker for a number of years, but this is your first feature length film, correct? Absolutely correct. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so before we get into it for the benefit of the audience, I will, uh, I'll give them the, the film synopsis and then I, I have some questions all about it for you. So um, Homebound is a twisted psychological thriller. It follows uh, Holly, played by Ashling Loftus, a young woman who travels with her new husband, played by Tom Goodman Hill, to meet his estranged family, only to find that his ex-wife is missing and the children are behaving in a number of strange ways. So, um, Sebastian, let's let's dive in about about yourself first as the as right. writer director here. So. Tell us a little bit about, about yourself, your filmmaking history. Where have you come from? How did you get here? Great, great. Um, well, first of all, it's so great to be here. So my own personal history. I feel like I, so I grew up in St. Albans in Hertfordshire. Um, and then, you know, I had made films with my brother from a very young age, from about 10, I think, was the, the usual kind of classic, huge VHS camera. Um, and yeah, every summer we kind of, we would make a little short film either based on a short story or maybe something that I'd written. Um, I think the first one, one of the early ones was Shredni Vashtar, which is about a, I think, a, a ferret which is trained to kill the boy's aunt. So it was always- Fantastic. Or, I'm always, into it already. <laughs> the, it was always, I think it was a, based on a Saki short story. Um, but so slightly kind of interested in the kind of unsavory family dynamics, I suppose, even from, even from that young age. Mm. Um, so yeah, and then I went to university and then I then attended trade, I did proper kind of film training in a film school in Poland, in um, the city of Łódź, which is uh, which is an amazing experience. And I had luckily to have a Leverhulm scholarship, which um, enabled me to go there uh, and spend a few, uh, two or three years there, which was fascinating. I don't know if anyone, if, if, if you will know, but it was a place where directors like Krzysztof Kieślowski and Wajda and um, Polanski, um, those kind of figures were there back in the day. And, you know, it remains an incredibly um, extraordinary place for lots of different reasons. Yeah. And we were talking just before we started, uh, happens coincidentally, a history of living in which myself, a, a, a wonderful city, anyone who's listening that hasn't been, um, Maybe not the first place you would imagine visiting in, in Poland if you were taking a trip there, but a great city, wonderful place. Extraordinary city. I know you're right. It's such an amazing coincidence that you were there. You were there living there too. No, it's an amazing city. And it's the and Wurge obviously means boat in um, English. Yeah, no, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing time and amazing people at the school um, and amazing friendships that I forged in my time there. Oh, great. So um Obviously, this we mentioned is your debut feature, um, but I know that you uh, have a long history, as you mentioned, of making short films. I know, actually, from looking at your 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 back catalogue as well, a lot of history in adapting from other portions of literature and making into your into your horror shorts as well. Um, but obviously, with your this being your first feature length, how was it compared to smaller productions, and were you disrupted by? Um, the dreaded COVID at all while you were doing your doing your filming. So, so this so this came this was an original film, the script that I that I'd written myself, um, which you know was 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 both more difficult and easier for, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, going back to I guess the genesis of the story. Going back, to, if it, I had a teacher in Poland, an amazing teacher, who said always said you should try you should make films about things that you're afraid of. Or that you're scared of. And so I think part of me has always been a little bit scared of families in a strange sense, mm -hmm. uh, both how other families can seem quite alien, um, but also how alien it can make an outsider feel. So I feel like in a sense that, um, you know, I wanted to make another, a, a new film based on that kind of premise in a sense. Um, 
and the script kind of came from that. I mean, we actually shot the film before I think COVID itself broke out. So we're lucky in that sense. So you're lucky that um, you didn't have the disruptions there. That's great. Exactly, exactly. But it did have an impact inevitably on the post-production and the editing. Um, but so yeah, if that answers that. Yeah, of course. Um, and you, you already mentioned that. So you mentioned the dynamic of family that you found, and I've certainly seen it in some of um, some of your other pieces. I managed to catch uh, the girls on your website as well. Um, so I know that children have played a significant number of iconic roles in horror, um, you know, across the board over the years, of course, you can all name a number of great iconic horror moments that feature that feature children, as I say, including some of your own shorts. Um, what what's inspired you from, you know, the wider from wider horror cinema? What what angle do you really take in including uh, the horror that? That, ch that children and, and the youth can bring to a, to a horror story? What, what inspires you in those areas? Such a great question. Um, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like some reason, Don't Look Now has always, has always been like a big kind of inspiration, mm -hmm. which I know is not necessarily about, it's not about children by any means, but it is somehow about the death of that child at the beginning of the film and the ghost yeah. of that child that runs through the film. But that's always been kind of a really interesting inspiration and influence for me. Also the kind of sense that opening sequence in particular, kind of the English countryside, um, stylistically has always been kind of somehow had a big impact on me. I don't know when I was, I feel like I used to watch that sequence quite a few times to kind of try and learn how filmmaking works a bit from it. Cause it's such a strong iconic sequence, obviously. And the yeah. dad comes running out and finds the body and it's just harrowing. Yeah. So that's been an, an Important influence. I don't know whether I mean I also, um, you know, I guess like 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 most of us has watched endless horror films, whether it's Wes Craven, whether it's um, you know Michael Haneke as well. It's a quite a kind of different approach to similar material in a way. Um, okay, yeah, that's that, that's great. It's good to see, and like I really like the the connections to Don't Look Now. I'd have never pulled it myself, but now you mention it, you can see those. Um, that connected tissue, and I, I agree. Like, even though it's not directly related to the child, the the loss of that child and the experience breathed into the, the, I guess, the psychology of the entire movie. But I guess we're now flipping it to the other side of the narrative. And I think you you touched on this when you talked about your overall inspirations as well. I think quite often in fiction of all kinds, horror aside, the the step parent figure is often quite a vilified one in our fiction, right? Especially in family centric fiction. Um, is that something, uh, a concept that you deliberately wanted to play with in, in this film? Absolutely. I mean, it kind of goes back a little bit to what I was saying about trying to explore the alienation that one can feel in the family, but also how exclusive they can be and how, you know, the idea of insider outsider is so strong, politically, socially, and also in a family sense. So in that sense, the stepmother is, is as you say, a very kind of classic outsider, vilified um do you know what i mean kind of a, yeah. ex excluded character so it became kind of a natural way into this particular story um to follow yeah. her and use that idea and also i think it does add that tiny bit sense of a fairy tale i think to the film yeah There's definitely something slightly otherworldly which i hope we re i was very keen to try and create um, in the telling of the story. Yeah, and I think in particular the, the performances um, really do capture the kind of uh, the, facially the, the performances that we get as the things begin to unfold in the movie. I think you really do get that um, that feeling of discovery and the feeling of, of horror that comes psychologically from building it so successfully done in my book, certainly. Well, thank you. That's really kind. But I, um, I think, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, no, no, carry on. Well, no, it's just like, for instance, you know, when we were talking about it at the time when their kids are drinking, the, you know, in the, in the evening and, mm -hmm. you know, for some people it, it was seen as you know, the most shocking thing and for other people it was kind of normal. So I guess that sense also of where, how do you, where's your moral comp compass at any one point, I suppose? At what point do you step in and say this is wrong and at what point do you not? And Yeah, it was, it's a really interesting dynamic, especially as, again, as that outsider character and the, the children's father is there and then that sense of where do you put in authority when you're this outside character is a really interesting concept to play with. I mean, for better or for worse, I mean, uh, inevitably, exactly, but it's in terms of the dad becoming, I think, in a way, the source of all the problems, arguably, mm -hmm. I think. But 
Okay, yeah, great. Um, the next one for me that I had here was that, so Fright Fest we know is going to be the, the UK premiere of the film. I understand that it's had a couple of US screenings. Have you had the opportunity to be in the room with an audience watching the film yet? I haven't, no. So I'm, that's why I'm so excited about next week. It's going to be really exciting to do that. So I this is going to be your first time seeing exactly. seeing people's reactions live. Exactly. I wasn't able to travel to um, Austin and Texas last year or presenting Beyond Fest in Los Angeles. And yeah, no, it was, a real, it was very surreal to think someone somewhere might be watching in the cinema or whilst one is potentially asleep. Yeah, <laughs> at the other side of the um, world, thousands of miles away. Exactly. And someone's there watching a movie. So I'm guessing that's going to be incredibly exciting, uh, traveling up to Glasgow to to watch it just next week at the time of recording, right? So Exciting, thrilling, nerve-wracking, you know, all those things. And so when it comes to an audience, you know, sitting and watching your film, what is it you, uh, you know, as a writer, director, what what feelings and what what messages would you like them to come away from that screening with? What what impression would you like to leave people with after they've seen your film? Mm, great question. Uh, I feel like it would be nice, inevitably one wants, one hopes not uh, to avoid boredom. I <laughs> no one's bored <laughs> Uh, I hope it. I hope it creates a slightly kind of live experience, which is what I was kind of hoping that it would do. But I think it's slightly unconventional. It's not. It's slightly like I think I tried to create as an experience as real as it could be for the duration of the film in that sense. So it's it's not necessarily a classic story per se. It's more kind of uh, an un unraveling of a situation over the course of you know twenty four hours in a sense. Yeah. I, so I just I, hope people are sufficiently engaged. Uh, and perhaps slightly provoked in some way in terms of how does this kind of situation arise really and have that question you know, uh, on their minds. I think you've absolutely hit it on the head with some of the scenes that you already mentioned. I, I would personally love to see those reactions, you know, where you see people's lines and where their moral compasses lie as you watch the scenes unfold. Um, yeah, hopefully you get a really good view of the audience. You've got your night vision at the at the front of the screening there so you can watch people's faces. Well, exactly. But it was a very, I mean, it was a very tiny budget as well. And it was very, um, you know, very, um, so, you know, it even makes it even more thrilling to be able to show it in the festival. And have that oh, experience. wonderful. Well, I, uh, I hope it's a great time watching that audience with it. Um, Thank you so much. Thank so you. I guess let's talk horror and, and films and other media indeed in, in general. So what, what themes and trends are you either expecting to or hoping to see come from horror media in, in the coming years? What are, you, what are you seeing in the circles you travel in, in in terms of themes for the genre overall? Which is a really exciting explosion, isn't it? In terms of um, what horror films can, can do in areas they can explore and I think they tend to be very subversive and increasingly psychoanalytical. Um, I mean, I feel like Arias is, for instance, just extraordinary, his, mm -hmm. his capability to explore all these big issues in a way that's, you know, entertaining and intense and um, very provocative. I don't know, I kind of feel like the next stage perhaps is to, um, I mean, I, I just feel like, you know, the, the, the big questions of nature and human nature and the, the nature around us is there to be interrogated through through the genre of horror film, it seems to me. And I'd really love for my next film to take that, you know, subject and really, really explore it. Um, that leads me very neatly to, own, to that le me. leads me very neatly to my next question then. So your first, you know, your first feature is under your belt. We're about to do UK premiere. Ooh, thankfully, uh, yeah, it's done and dusted. So what's what's next for you? Where do you want to go next? What would you like to do next? Anything anything in the pipeline that you can already talk about or just uh, the wish list? Well, not really, not yet. I mean, like I said, the next film, I would love to make the story about a family who go into a you know, remote setting and it is very much about nature and there's an animal involved and um, it should be properly disturbing and frightening. Um, so hopefully we can get you know some finance together to be able to make that um, on, a, on a slightly bigger budget because this one was so small um, and just spread the wings a bit more would be really exciting for me. Great, exciting and I uh, will be following along we uh, we hope to see it. Um, just most importantly I guess for anyone who most wants to of all, follow that? you uh, yeah where can our listeners 
find you know find you find your work keep up to date with your new projects where's the best place for people to find you outside of outside of glasgow next week apart apart from there and that's a great question so i guess my website is there or um i instagram i don't know if that's i i'm not on twitter so um those two places i think is a, a perhaps yeah, absolutely. What we can do is for anyone who's listening, we are doing a full episode on on Fright Fest in a couple of weeks time. Once, you know, once we're out of embargoes and everything is uh, out, we're going to do a full episode. So whether you're listening to just this interview as a bonus or you're listening to um, the full episode, we will put all of every single director or cast member that we speak to, we'll put all of their social links and their websites in the show notes. So if you're listening to this now, you can pick them up and follow them to your heart's content. Um, all that's left for me to say then, Sebastian, is thank you very much for your time today. I hope the I hope the screening goes really well for everyone else. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, um, you can become a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash horror hangout. Thanks for Kovach Kalman for our theme music. Thanks for ACAS for hosting the show. Please consider giving us a rating or review uh, uh, anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Or you can head over to the Facebook group, the Horror Hangout Board of Advisors, where you can interact with us and learn about more things that are coming up. Thank you very much, Sebastian. And uh, good, luck with the, good luck with the premiere. Hope you have an amazing festival. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.